Hey YouTube, BabyJace here, and today I'm going to make a Frost DK guide for the patch 7.1. A lot of you have basically been asking me to make a Frost DK guide, and I've been pretty much swamped with school and a lot of other things, so tonight is really the first opportunity that I could finally take some time to, uh, to make this. So uh, we're going to dive right in with the talents. Now, for most fights, you're going to want to roll with these talents. Uh, Icy Talents, Frozen Pulse. Um, permafrost, runic continuation, those are pretty much the main talents. Now you can either go ice cap or avalanche. Um, I prefer ice cap. Um, you, you definitely go ice cap if you have the frost DK bracers. There's some argument over ice cap versus avalanche, but you know, like I said, I prefer ice cap. But um, it's kind of up to you. I really don't see too much of a difference. I mean, most people go ice cap. The last one is basically based on fight. Now you're going to go to obliteration if there's only single target and you're going to go glacial advance if there's cleave. Now for the trial of valor raid I go glacial advance on Odin and then I go obliteration on Guarm and Helia. And the reason why I go obliteration especially on Helia is because yes while there is adds and there is slimes phase 3 boss damage is like the most important thing that you could do on that fight. And unfortunately, phase three boss damage, obliteration is just gonna pull out ahead. However, you can go glacial advance. It's not too much of a difference in terms of damage. Now, for the most part in Emerald Nightmare, I do prefer glacial advance, and I think I only go obliteration on like, Ursoc, um, Ursoc, uh, Nathendra. That's really it. The rest of it, I just go glacial. As for this row, um, really, you only go Frost Scythe if, the, if there's like a lot of AoE, so like on Dragons of Nightmare, maybe Frost Scythe could be good. On um, Ilgnoth, it's pretty good, but basically for everything else, Frost Scythe is crap. You just only use Frost Scythe on Mythic Plus. That's That ability is used a lot on Mythic Plus. So yeah, those are the talents. Uh, pretty much Frozen Pulse, Icy Talents, these are like the standard. The other twos are just not worth it. They just suck. Gathering Storm sucks. Just don't bother with it. I prefer Winter is Coming because um, in Dungeons it's really freaking nice. Um, a Bombs Might. I use this on Mythic Odin to randomly stun adds because the adds kind of hurt. You know, not they don't always hurt, but they kind of do hurt. Now, as far as legendaries go, you pretty much want the Bracers. That's the best legendary. Bracers Belt are the two best legendaries, but. You know, you get what you get. I'm I'm currently using Evanimore and Agrimar Stride, and the main reason why I'm using Evanimore and not my Safus, especially for raids, or uh, and maybe more specifically because of Helia, is there's really no ads you can CC on Helia that are worthwhile in Phase One or Phase Three, and the Evanimore brings me to the 20% haste uh, soft cap when I use haste food. Now, the reason why you want the 20% soft cap for um, haste is because with obliteration, you're able to get in seven GCDs, which is really important because, excuse me, I'm a little sick. Um, with, the, with your first GCD, you're gonna frost strike with, to get cam. Second is obliterate. Third is uh, frost strike. Fourth is obliterate. Um, fifth is frost strike again. Sixth is obliterate. And your 7th GCD will barely squeeze out another Frost Strike to get another KM proc. And if you don't have the 20% haste, you're not going to get that 7th GCD. And that's that's one crit obliterate you're just missing out on completely. So, I think it's pretty important. Um, as for the boots, don't knock them until you get them. We always meme on them a lot, but uh, there's a lot of fights where the boots actually comes out pretty nice. Like obviously on Guarm they're like a piece of shit, but on Odin and Helia they're not they're not bad. I like the boots. I you know they're not bad. As for trinkets, um, I'm gonna link in the video description a list of all the trinkets. You know from 860 eye level to 885 level to 895 eye level or 865 865 880 890 uh, 895 eye level. And you're gonna have to kind of use that to see what trinkets better for you. As for stat weights, please don't ask me about stat weights. The way Frost works is if you have a shit ton of one stat, that stat becomes way worse than the other stats. It's a balancing act. So 
basically my advice is every time you get a new item you need to sim yourself for your stat weights and um, that's pretty much what I'm gonna tell you if you ask me for my stat weight string I'm gonna ignore it because it's just hurting you that those are my stat weights for my gear your gear is gonna be drastically different from my gear like my gear I have a fuck ton of mastery thanks to this stupid trinket and like other random pieces of crap gear like I have crit verse here and you know you know this is just my gear so don't worry too much about my gear just focus on your own gear when it comes to simming yourself um what else did I want to talk about <laughs> if you do have a Safuz like in your in dungeons um you can proc it from your remorseless winner when you have pillar of fossil up and you can also proc it off of arcane torrent as for potions, potion of the old war and the prolonged power, it depends, fight the fight. On Guarm I use potion of the old war, um, on Helia I'm using prolonged power because of the cleave. I mean, if it's pure single target and no cleave, old war might be better, probably is better, especially if you're using obliteration. Um, but if you're not using obliteration, so like like on Earthsock I use glacial advance, I would just use prolonged power because when that ad comes up, your prolonged power should still be up. I think I think it might be up it might not be up if it's not up whatever you can just use another one but I mean the prolonged power does increase the damage that your Syndragosa does and if your Syndragosa is hitting two with prolonged power up that's really nice now when do you use Syndragosa um, you want to squeeze out as many Syndragosas as you can however if you know that you're only going to get like one Syndragosa you want to make sure that it's the most optimal um, and Outside of that though, you, you whenever you do use it, you want to make sure you have Pillar of Frost up. You want to, you know, maybe have Prolonged Power depending on what part of the fight it is. Um, you want to have like 10 stacks of your Trinket if you're using that kind of Trinket. You know, like I have Command, something easily you can get up to 10 stacks or uh, 20 stacks of the other Trinket, the Chaos Talisman. You want to get that. And the big thing is... You want to have five stacks of the Razor Ice on your target, and you want to have your Fallen Crusader procced. Um, if you have all of that up, it is a good time to Syndragosa. Um, if you're missing like the Fallen Crusader proc, you might want to delay it to the next one, unless that would cause you to lose a Syndragosa. If you're going to completely lose out on a Syndragosa, you don't want to delay it. it it's a really tough balancing act um, on when to use your Syndragosa. But you really want to get the most value out of it when you can. So, usually cleave. But, potentially the boss damage that you get from it could be worth using it if uh, you have to use it early. When there's no cleave, if that guarantees you're going to get a second one on the boss, could it could be useful if you're pushing boss damage and not trying to pad. But yeah. Um, what else? Uh, pretty much use Remorseless Winter. I don't use it like exactly on cooldown, but I do use it often, and usually it's when like I have like a lone rune. I'll just randomly use the remorseless on the lone rune to get it going. I mean, it's not it's not wasted damage. The the remorseless winner, if it hits every single time, is something good to use. Obviously, if you have two runes and a remorseless winner and like a cam proc, you don't remorseless. You you obliterate on your cam proc. But if you have two runes and no cam, I mean, remorseless is a very valid uh, ability to use. Especially on AoE, Remorseless is not bad on AoE. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's this goes over all the abilities really. Now I'm gonna do a little quick thing on me actually using all of my buttons, and you can kind of see like in the top left here, uh, basically my rotation. So let me eat here, and then uh, I'll use I'll, I'll go through like a maybe a one minute pull. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like a one minute pull is probably good enough. And uh, I won't. I don't really need to talk. You're gonna see it here on the top left. Uh, every ability I use. I mean, maybe I'll say a couple things, but you'll see all the abilities that I'm using up on the top left. So once I've eaten, all right, let me get a pull timer going. Okay, I messed up the previous pull, so we're going off of a new pull. Uh, one thing to note is before you use obliteration, you want to make sure your GCD is either up or almost up, and that is because that is the only way you're gonna squeeze out the seven GCDs that you need. So we're gonna do a pull timer here. For those wondering, I was getting attacked by the other mob. That's why Five, we changed it. Four, three, we're gonna pre-pot at two, one. One. Pillar, Howling Blast. I use the, the obliteration, one GCD, two GCD, three GCD, four. 
five, six, and seven. And then you want to use your rhyme and then your obliterate. And then you want to just start getting rid of runes. Um, I messed up there. You should have frost strike first to keep up your icing talons. It's not like really too big of a deal, but you do want to keep that up. Um, Howling Blast. And then you basically just want to keep up your uh, icy talons. I'm going to use the remorseless here. But you can kind of see like what I'm doing. Um, once you get more comfortable with the rotation, you're going to be able to be a little more greedy when it comes to your uh, your icy talons. Like I'm going to be, you know, sometimes you can let it go on like the last possible GCD. Um, and really like this is just going to take some practice, right? You just need to practice with the, the rotation. Um, I see I have everything up, and so I'm just going to Dragon. Um, well, I guess I didn't have a potion up, but, you know, just Dragon there. Assuming potion was up, though, I had Pillar, I had this up, I had Only Strength up, it has five stacks. Like, really, that's pr pretty much when you Dragon. And yeah, I mean, like, this is the rotation. It's not too complicated. Um, I know it took a long time to get this guide up, but, I mean... This, the spec is is pretty easy. It's pretty simplistic. It's pretty easy, and it's a lot of fun. Um, you're gonna make mistakes here and there. I, I make mistakes all the time. Everyone makes mistakes with this spec, but you just gotta you just gotta get used to it. And uh, other than that, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave uh, go ahead and leave your comments, and I'll respond to most of them, if not all of them. Um, in the description, you're gonna have the list of all the trinkets that are abyss. You know, the ranking of the trinkets, um, we're gonna have my UI in the comments if you want my UI, it's gonna have all my, all my tell me wins, my weak ores here, it's gonna have all that stuff, and uh, yeah, other than that, uh, have a good day, you know, like, subscribe, have a good day.